feel comfortable. My feet were hurt. My legs was hurt. I was complaining to my wife, letting no baby. Oh, oh, oh. I'm hurting. I'm hurting. You know, I try to blame it on the, on, on the tennis shoes I got. So I, I took the, the ones that I had. I said, these things are worn out because my feet are killing me. So I put on another pair of tennis shoes, and that kind of helped out. But that didn't help out with the legs and all the other muscles. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this hurts. But here it is, beloved. I want you to understand something in our spirit life. Amen. When it comes to exercising our spirit, man, we're going to be hurting sometimes. Amen. There's going to be some struggles. You, you're going to have to struggle sometimes to, to make it the Bible study. Amen. To, to have a consistent prayer life. It's hard sometimes to maintain. Listen, you can't just come to Christ on today and think everything is going to be hunky-dory and peachy creamy. No, you got to work at your soul salvation. Amen. You have to continue. This is a continued effort. It's a continued effort. It is ongoing constantly, constantly. Your pastor, listen, you can't, I can't expect for me to come before you week after week and I don't get into this word myself. Deacon S. Perel, when she studies for Bible Sunday school, amen, she has to study to show herself well, first of all, approve them to God. Amen. Then she can bring what she's learned and teach those in her Sunday school class. It is a constant effort, beloved, for us as believers to continuously watch, watch this, get off the treadmill and get on a real road when it comes to working out our spiritual growth. Amen. Right. Okay, all right. So, so I, I, mentioned, I mentioned Wednesday, didn't I? Well, let me help you out. On Wednesday nights, and, and I want to encourage you to come out of Wednesday nights, but Wednesday nights we've been in a series uh, called Goliath Must Fall. And this past Wednesday, we taught about the giant of comfort. And we've learned that uh, the giant of comfort is a sneaky giant. Because the giant of comfort can cause you and I to, 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 to not step out on faith when God would have us to do something. Amen? So we've discussed uh, the past several weeks about uh, the biblical story about David and Goliath. Most of us know that story. And we talked about how it was that uh, David had fought Goliath. We know when David killed Goliath. But when you read the context of that biblical narrative, amen, you'll find some interesting things there. First of all, first of all, and I, keep, I told you on Wednesday, every time I read this story, I'm finding something new, a new revelation that the Holy Spirit has given unto me. And as, as I was studying this uh, for this message today, the Lord brought to mind about David and the life um, and how it was that, watch this, the Bible says, the Bible says that the Israelite army, they came to one side, I'm just going to paraphrase it, and the Philistine army came to one side and they're about to fight, but they said, listen, we got no need to fight. The Bible says that they, the Philistines sent out their champion fighter, who by the name of Goliath. He said he was a giant of a man. Yes. He was a giant of a man. He, he, he watches. The Bible describes him as being their champion. Mm -hmm. And here it is, there's armies, but they only send out one person. And the Bible says that Goliath comes out and he's talking all this smickety smack. He's just talking, talking about what he's going to do to the children of Israel. And he said, he said, I tell you what, I tell you what, you send out somebody that's going to fight me. All right, this mano y mano. Me against him. And if your fighter beats me, okay, cool, then we'll bow down and we'll serve y'all and we'll be your slaves. But then if I beat you, then y'all will have to be our slaves. Okay, so, so mind you now, King Saul, who is the king, and he's a, a, an, an outstanding warrior. The Bible says that everybody became afraid, even the king. Yeah. Now, that really didn't make too much sense to me. Because if I'm a champion warrior, you know, just because you say, get this now, just because you say mm -hmm. you're the champ, that don't necessarily mean you're the champ. I mean, where to prove? Where your belt? Y'all don't want to talk to me this morning. Okay, so, 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 so here it is. He comes up, and the Bible says that for 40 days, for 40 days, Tanya, for 40 days, Goliath came out talking junk. 40 days. And I made this, I, I made this statement, Candace, on, on Wednesday night. For 40 days, 
He came out. But what happens after daytime? There comes what? Nighttime. Right? There comes so you mean to tell me that this dude for 40 days could come out and talk smack, but he can go back and rest peacefully? You mean to tell me there's nobody in the camp that has the ability to, to be able to strategize in the nighttime hour and sneak up and bust old boy upside the head? Think about it. Not only, not only did the giant of fear keep them from moving forward, but also the giant of comfort. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Because, because in 1 first, first Samuel chapter 17, and you can read about David and Goliath in 1 Samuel chapter 17. But look at this. David's, David's father, Jesse, had instructed David to go and bring his brother. His brothers was there fighting with Saul. And, and so here it is in verse 17. It says, Jesse is telling him, said, look, take this basket of roasted grain and these ten loaves of bread and carry them quickly to your brothers and give these ten cuts of cheese to their captain. All right? So, so here it is. These men were not motivated to go into battle because why? They had, they had food. I mean, here it is, here it is, watch this. Somebody, George, is bringing you some, some, some Burger King Whoppers and they on sale, two for six dollars. Huh? Somebody bringing you whatever, what, I mean, they just bringing you food. You got, and all you got to do is just sit there and you're going to bring me food. Well, I, I don't need to go out and fight. It's pretty comfortable right here where I'm at. No, thank you. I'm going to stay right here. And see, this is what happens, beloved. See, you got to understand something. This is not the season for us to sit back and stop doing things. This is not the season for you and I to get comfortable in our relationship and our faith with God. This is a season for us to all be doing a work for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. It's the time for us. Watch this. It's time for us. If you're not already in spiritual shape, it's time for you to get in some spiritual shape. Amen. It's time for you to get off that treadmill and get out on a road where the where, where people need to be fed. Get out on a road where people are dying and struggling. Get out on a road where the, the the crack addict needs to know that he or she can be saved. It's time for us to get out of the four walls and do the work of the ministry. But you know, if somebody want to sit back and. Just, just relax. But Paul says in the text, he says, he says, listen, it's, it's, there's, there's work to be done. He says there's work to be done. There's, there's souls that need to be saved. And Paul is saying, listen, I have to do whatever it takes to get my physical body and my spiritual body in shape. Why? Because there are souls that are dependent on me. And I'm going to show you what I, what I mean. In, in 1 Corinthians, the same, same chapter, all right? Which, which, which is why Paul is saying what he's saying in verse 24. But look at verse 19. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 9, chapter 9 and verse 19. And again, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Let's look at what Paul says. He says, even though I am a free man with no master, I have become a slave to all people to bring many to Christ. When I was with the Jews, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. When I was with those who followed the Jewish law, I too lived under that law. Even though I am not subject to the law, I did this so I could bring to Christ those who are under the law. Look at what verse, verse 21. When I am, get this, when I am with the Gentiles who do not follow the Jewish law, I too live apart from that law so I can bring them to Christ. But I do not ignore the law of God. I obey the law of Christ. Let me stop there because I need for you to understand this verse. Because what Paul is saying is, he says, he says, where, where the Gentiles are, and they don't follow the law of the Jewish law. In other words, they're not following the scriptures like, like he's following or you and I are following. When he's talking about these Gentiles, he's talking about the unsaved portion of Israel. He's talking about those now that are not saved, that don't come to church. So he says, listen, I, I go to them uh, and, and I shared them apart from the law. Because Paul, instead of, if you read in scripture, you know how it was with Paul. Paul wouldn't deal with folk that ate certain kind of things, that ate swine. And the Holy Spirit had to speak to him and said, don't you dare call what I've made clean, uh, unclean, clean. Are you hearing me? So, so here it is. Paul said, listen, I still can go and talk to the Gentiles. I can still, but listen, I don't, I don't, I don't stop being who I am. 
I want to win them, but I'm going to win them at, the, at, at Christ's expense. So you and I understand something, beloved. There are going to be some people that come in your life, amen, that they may not know the God that you know. Amen. They may not read the scripture like you read it, but because of the love of God in you and because you know that there's a work to be done, that souls need to be saved, you'll be, you'll, you'll just, you'll, have you ever just come, try to come down to somebody's level in order for them to try to understand what it is that they need to understand? Y'all, y'all looking at me kind of funny. Amen, amen. So, so, so here it is. Paul is saying, "Listen, I, I, I'll, I'll do what I have to do to bring them to Christ, but I do not ignore the law. In other words, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep my salvation." What the songwriter say? I'm going to stay saved. I ain't going to start cussing. Amen. I ain't going to start. I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay saved. Amen. When you eat the last piece of my sweet potato pie, what I'm going to stay? I'm going to stay saved. Amen. So Paul was saying, listen, I, I want them to come, but I, 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 I'm going to still obey the law of God. All right, verse 22. When I am with those who are weak, I share their weakness. For I want to bring the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone, doing everything I can to save some. I do everything to spread the good news and share in its blessing. Paul said, listen, there's work to be done. So whatever it takes for me to do, I'm willing to do it so somebody can be saved. Yes, yes. So you got to understand something, beloved. Discipline of prayer, Bible study, worship, all of those things equip us to run with vigor and stamina. Don't just merely observe from the grandstand, all right? Don't just turn out to jog a couple of, of, of laps each morning. But you got to train diligently because your spiritual growth, your spiritual progress depends on you doing just that. Getting out training diligently. How do you train? By getting in Bible study. Amen. 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 By coming to Sunday school. That's how you train. Amen. Staying in the word of God. Amen. I say it time and time again. Cut off the TV. Oops. I messed up. <laughs> who who you? Y'all, y'all. Uh, uh, Illinois. Uh, uh. You, you like you like who you, who you like who your football team? You ain't got a football who you come on I know I know I know the babies you got a football team who, who? the Panthers Carolina Panthers they playing today they not playing today who your team you got a team okay Carolina Panthers what would you say if God spoke to you when the Carolina Panthers were playing let's just say they playing today at one o'clock if the if the Carolina's playing at 1 o'clock and we get out of church and get home time enough and the Lord says to you, I want you to talk to me. I want you to spend time in your word while your Panthers are playing. What you going to do? I think you ain't got to answer. Hey, you ain't got to answer. You ain't got to I'm just, I'm just making a point. I'm just making a point. How more important is your relationship with the Father to you than it is for you to do other things? that will keep you from, from having your spiritual progress. Because watch this, not only does your spiritual progress depend on you, but it helps depend on somebody else. Because guess what, you can't tell somebody that you don't know anything about. That's right. That's right. You, can't minister, you can't effectively minister to somebody if you don't know anything about the saving grace that we're talking about. Amen. Amen, somebody. So see, here it is, watch this. I, I hope y'all got y'all shot on last week because we might not get one this week. Amen. Right. Paul reminds us, listen, he reminds us in verse 25. Listen, he says, everyone who competes in the games does, goes into strict training. Strict training. In other words, the serious athlete. The seri I'm not talking about the, 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 the fly by nighttime athlete. I'm talking about the serious athlete engages in all consuming preparations for completion and preparation which is, 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 is relentless. They're focused, they're determined, and listen, when, when somebody is training, seriously training, there ain't no stopping. That's right. There's no stopping. They, they're, they're focused, they're focused. And, and that athlete watches carefully, watch this. Not only are they focused, George, but watch this, a real athlete, they're gonna watch what they eat. That's right. Hello, somebody. They're gonna watch, they're gonna watch they're going to make sure they get plenty of rest. So here it is. We, we, just, think, we just think that uh, 
we're, we're getting in shape just to get in shape. But don't, don't you understand something? We can't do ministry effectively if we're sluggish. You're right, Pastor. Amen. If, if, can I, can, help me, Holy Spirit. Okay, I'm just going to speak to myself. I'm just going to speak about myself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I understand, I understood that the way I was, being overweight, mm -hmm. wasn't helping me or anybody else. Amen. Church could have took out an insurance policy on me and could have, could have cashed in on any day. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Because here I am, getting out of shape. This is how bad I was. This is how bad I was. I was so bad that I couldn't, I couldn't sit down and tie my shoe without getting out of breath. So how, how effective can I be? Can't be effective, first of all, to my family, to my, to my wife, which is my first ministry. Hello, somebody. Y'all missed that wrong folk. Amen. <laughs> then how can I be able to come here and preach and minister effectively when I'm out of shape, out of breath, and you think, you'll think, I think I'm trying to hoop, but I ain't trying to hoop, I'm trying to catch my breath. <laughs> that ain't... That ain't being in the spirit. That's oh Lord. I'm just being honest, <laughs> brother. Just, just y'all see what I'm saying? So, so we have to, we have to watch, watch. We have to watch not only, not only in the physical sense, beloved. Watch what we eat, but we gotta watch what we eat in our spirit, man. You got to watch what you eat with your spirit, man. I tell you time and time again, be careful about all these people that you see on television that's, right. that's calling them spell cells, right. preaching the gospel. Right. You better try the spirit by the spirit. And let me tell you, I, oh, what I, what I, can't, what I de just despise right now, it seems like everybody, you can't, you can't watch a televangelist right now and watch them and them not sell something. Mm -hmm. yeah. At the end of the broadcast, they ask you to spend your money and buy this. We're going to send you this. If you send $88, we're going to send you that devil is alive. Stop trying to pimp out my God. Amen. Amen. The word is free. It doesn't cost you anything but to give your life to God. So stop telling me I got to pay you this amount of money to get some kind of trinket you sent to me. Tell me how to be saved. Tell me how to live holy. Tell me how to live right. And it don't cost me anything. But every time you turn around, it makes me, it just makes me, it, whoo, Jesus. Anytime I see that, I, I, my wife will tell you, I turn it off. Turn it off. Because no, 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 no. Don't tell me. When you come here, when you come here. CDs are already made available. How much we charge for the CDs, George? Nothing. 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 How much we gonna start charging for them? Nothing. Amen. Jesus already paid the price. So why are we trying to charge? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's all right. But listen, listen, listen. You gotta be careful about what you eat. Be careful where you go to eat. Amen, somebody. Amen. Because just like, listen, just like, you know, some of us, we got our favorite restaurants. Just because I've lost weight, big fella, don't mean I don't like to go out and eat. Amen. I'm going to go out and get my grub on. Amen. But I watch what I eat. And not only do I watch what I eat, but I watch where I go to eat. That's right. Huh? Have you ever gone to a restaurant, watch this, even to McDonald's? You ever take the time to look at the score? I always do. Whoo! And see the grade on the window? Well, Don't nobody ever take the time to look at that, do you? You better be careful where you go out to eat at. Mm, amen. That's the same thing in your spirit, man. Be careful who you try to sit up under and call yourself being fed. Mm, because guess what? Mm, I've always been told, I've always been told, Deacon that's for that a good piece of meat will make its own gravy. Hey, mm. Amen, somebody. Amen. So that means if I come up here and give you the word of God, even if I don't say, eh, that means that, listen, that, that's just the gravy part. But if I don't give you the gravy, the meat that I give you ought to be good enough. Preach, Holy Spirit. You got to be careful where you're going to eat. And then listen, you got to get your rest. You got to get your rest. Amen. We can't be effective in ministry. And yet, I understand that we, we, most of us, the majority of us, other than a few people in the room, got to work. 
I ain't gonna call no names, the other one. Speaking us for real, speaking for real. I ain't gonna call no names. But listen, they deserve, they deserve to sit down. They work, they work, they did their time. They did their time. They time. But for, for those of us that still gotta get out there and hit it, guess what? Get out there and hit it, but you gotta get your rest as well. Amen. Because guess what? Just as, just as, hallelujah, the same amount and quality of time that you put in to go into that job, listen, God deserves that and more. So don't dare try to use an excuse, well, oh, I gotta work, I'm tired, I don't wanna hear that, God don't wanna hear your excuses. Get your butt and do ministry for the kingdom of God. Ooh, I'm sorry. Uh, they that, verse 25, they that do it to get a crown, they will not last. Those crowns won't last, but we do it to get a crown that will last, what, forever. What we do for the kingdom, beloved, we're doing it for a crown that when we get to heaven, and here it is, watch this, when we get that crown, the Bible says, listen, because we know we don't deserve it, we're going to take that crown and lay it, we're going to lay it at the feet of Jesus. Amen. Because he's deserving of all of that. Are you hearing me? Amen. Amen. I'm about to get finished, but listen, notice, if you will, in verse 36, uh, verse, excuse me, verse 26, the Apostle Paul talks about running a runner and a boxer. He says, so I run with purpose in every step. I'm not just shadow boxing. Beloved, no one wants to run away a race and come in second place. When we're in a boxing match, watch this, you're not just fighting the win. There's always going to be an opponent. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. And the objective, the objective in the boxing match is Candace is to knock your opponent out. Amen. You don't want a TKO, which is a technical knockout. You don't want to win by points because you landed more punches than the other fighter. No, you want to knock that joker out. You want to lay him out on the mat. But you can't do that if you're not running the race, if you're not conditioning your body. When we talk about that boxer, or Paul was talking about that, 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 that enemy that we come up against each and every day of our lives. You want to not say now and keep him knocked out. Right. Amen, somebody. Amen. In this life, we're going to always have these spiritual battles. If you're living for God, hear me, if you're living for God, if you're doing work for the kingdom of God, you ought to expect to come up against some obstacles. You ought to expect the enemy to try to come and to take you down. But because you have been running and conditioning your body, as Paul has said, now you've conditioned yourself that, listen, you're not shadow boxing. You're not in this thing to come in second place. You're in this thing to win a prize, an incorruptible prize. You're in this thing to win a crown. You're in this thing to win at any cost. Mm, man. Man. You're in this thing. And here's the thing, and I'm going to be finished. you got to understand something. You can't win unless you train. And you can't you can't win and train. You got to train in your own area of expertise. Amen. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to be finished. We have, been, we have been talking about spiritual gifts and knowing what your gifts are. Okay? If you have not received the questionnaire from Deacon S. Farrell, please do so at the end of the service. But listen, you have to know your gift and know how to operate in your gift and know how to, can I just say it like this? You got to know how to stay in your lane. Because watch this, if, you, if you're driving a car and you swerve into somebody else's lane, what's going to happen? You're going to have an accident. Amen? Because you ain't got no business being over there. Amen. You ain't got no business crossing the line. All right? So it was the same way in our spirit, man, beloved. You got to know what your gift is. Identify your gift. You don't know what your gift, you need to be praying. Ask Father, in the name of Jesus, help me to identify with my spiritual gift so I can be of service to the body of Christ. All right? Okay, all right, all right. I'm going to help you understand this real quick. The fight that took place a couple weeks ago, all right? McGregor and May 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 Mayweather, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. McGregor lost. Why? He wasn't prepared. He ain't a boxer. <laughs> now, if he was in, what's the thing? The MA, whatever, what's the, what's the stuff called? UFC. 
MM, who? MMA, MMA UFC. Whatever it is. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Now, if he had been fighting in his own arena, uh -huh. oh man, he's a man. Yeah. yeah. But you can't expect to come from your sport mm -hmm. and come into a sport where the champion is and expect to beat the champion. Mm. Nope. Y'all see what I'm saying? <laughs> Does that make any sense? Amen. I'm not neither for either one, but I want you to understand this analogy. Mm -hmm. You got to know what your gift is. Right. You got to know how to operate in your gift. Yes. Amen. So you can win that race that you're in. Are you hearing me? Amen. Get off your treadmills and get on the railroad. Yes. Yes. Stop trying to make it easy, all right, when, when this life is not easy. Because Jesus said, listen, there were those that wanted to follow Jesus. Said, listen, I'll follow you, Jesus. Jesus said, okay, hold on. Time out. Mm -hmm. You really want to follow me? He said, birds of the air have nests. Foxes and holes to sleep in, but guess what? The Son of Man ain't got nowhere to lay his head. So if you want to follow me, you got to be prepared to go through some tough times. Amen. This walk that we serve, this Christian, this Christian journey that we're on, beloved, is not always going to be an easy journey. Amen. 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 And if somebody sold you that, then they told you a lie. Mm -hmm. It's not always going to be easy. <laughs> but with the help of God, yeah. my goodness, He will give you peace. Yes. He will give you joy. In the midst of trouble, in the midst of trial, in the midst of health going bad, he will heal you, he will deliver you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Amen. Thank you, Lord. This is what he'll do. But we got to train, but beloved, we got to train. There's work for us to do. There's work for each and every one of you to do. But especially as a body, there's work for us to do. So we all got to, we all got to get on the road. We got to do some road work. Amen, somebody. We got to do some shit. We got to get in shape. We got to get, get our rest. Amen. 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 We got to eat a proper diet. Amen. Hello. Amen. So we can be of a, 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 a effect, of a benefit to the kingdom of God. There's purpose, and I'm finished. Listen, there's purpose in each and every one of our lives here today. Don't you dare think that there's not a purpose on your life. There's a purpose on your life. And you needed to hear that today. There's purpose on your life. My young people, don't you know there's purpose on your life? Amen. Amen. Thank you. I heard you. Yes, there's purpose on your life. Thank you, Jesus. And it's a godly purpose for each and every one of us to be a witness for the kingdom. To be a witness for the kingdom. I thank you so much for taking the time and sharing with us on today. And I pray that this message has blessed you. It may have been a little unconventional, un un uh, uh, but that's how the Holy Spirit works around here. Amen. I just pray that the word has blessed you. I pray, I just pray that right wherever you are, if you've been in a comfort, comfortable place, I pray that you come out to a comfortable place because there's work for you to do in the kingdom of God. I pray if you're not saved, oh my God, if you're not saved, I pray that this word has touched you in such a way that you may not be here in Georgia, but wherever you are, that you will seek out a church that is preaching and teaching the true, unadulterated word of God, and that you will give your life to Jesus Christ today. Don't wait for tomorrow. Don't wait till next Sunday. But find a place to go to today and give your life to Christ and allow him to make your life brand new. I love you. I love you with the love of Jesus Christ. And I pray that if you are in this, this area, if you're coming in Georgia to visit, we surely do invite you to come by and share with us at any time here at our 11 a.m. worship service. We appreciate you so much for sharing with us on this morning. And as you go today, have a prosperous, productive, and power-filled day. And always remember to fully rely on